So uh, briefly. So uh, briefly, some some uh, published data that uh, it, here we're, we're looking at three compounds in different classes. Uh, thioflavin T on the left hand side there. This is a compound that. Um, is, is appears in thousands of papers because it, it binds amyloids and is used to quantify the 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 aggregation of amyloids such as a beta and that's because of of a fluorescence shift that happens when it intercalates in beta sheets and in, in a beta and other amyloids and uh this was something that was raised by Silvestri Alves in my lab a postdoc who thought is there any biological function to, to this compound so it's a synthetic compound. It's also related to Pittsburgh compound B, which is actually used to visualize amyloids in, in, in living humans. Um, second compound, alpha ketoglutarate, well known as a TCA um, metabolite. It's also a cofactor of many, many enzymes in, involved in lots of different aspects of biology. So a natural metabolite. And then finally, vitamin D, which you, you could classify as a nutrient. And so we've been studying these in different projects over the years and, and, and following to different extents. But let me just point to some of the common features of these compounds. So here is quantification. And this slide is really aimed at showing you that, wow, you know, despite the fact that these compounds are very different from each other, they have these common aspects, lifespan extension, and now suppressing amyloid beta toxicity. Um, just a, a few words on thioflavin T. We uh, engaged in a study in collaboration with Brian Kennedy and, and many others at the Buck Institute. This one was led by Simon Meloff. And we looked at a compound called HBX, which is a, a relative of thioflavin T. It's a modified compound that also binds metals. And we did a late life intervention study on a large number of animals. And critical to this study was um, it's longitudinal, so we're looking at the same animals, time point after time point. And in, in this study, we, we measured cardiovascular health, we, we measured bone health, metabolism, uh, body weight, and so on. And uh, the, 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 uh, briefly, the major outcome of this study was, was first of all, uh, a comprehensive understanding of the number of animals we really need to use to, to uh, make sense of the observations of an intervention. I'd recommend you, I'll show you the, the paper in a second, I'd recommend you have a look at that. The, 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 the practical outcome actually was uh, an effect on, on bone health. So Simon was able to show that the mice lose bone densities uh, as uh, just, just like humans in a very similar fashion. And um, he was also able to demonstrate that this compound, HBX, reduced the extent of, of bone loss. Quickly, AKG, uh, with, with Brian Kennedy's lab, we, we showed that alpha ketoglutarate extends lifespan in mice in, in two cohorts. This is pooled female and, and male data here. Um, it's a modest increase in lifespan, um, but what was less modest was the effect on health span. And we can really sum this up with, with a couple of pictures here. The, the mice on the right are uh, control mice, and it's a very somewhat similar experimental design to the, the previous uh, work I showed you in HBX, where we have older mice coming into the lab. We're treating them from 16 to 18 months, and then we're following their natural decline with age from, from there on. And in this case, we used a frailty index, and this is a, a, a multiple uh, parameter measure of, of health in these animals. And you can see in the controls that the, the animals are, uh, the, the hair is graying. They're also losing hair. Uh, they, they have skin conditions. And if this was a video, you would see that they're, they're not so great moving around the cage here. They're, they're definitely normal, uh, older animals showing signs of, of aging. In contrast, the mice on the left have been fed a diet that's uh, rich in AKG. Uh, AKG tends to decline in humans with age. And so what's probably going on here is that we're, we're uh, uh, restoring the AKG to perhaps normal levels. And you'll see quite startlingly the, the health of the animals look better, even just visually, in terms of coat color, coat quality, and, uh, and movement of the animals. So this work from uh, Azar Asari uh, was, uh, uh, you know, measured uh, something like 31 different measures of frailty in the mice. And uh, with Brian, we, we we really had a close look at this data. And, and I think it's telling us something 
important and exciting. And very briefly, you can imagine in a population of mice, you have long-lived mice and short-lived mice, and you have a period of morbidity where these animals are, are not looking good based on the, the metrics that we measured. Uh, what we saw with the alpha ketoglutarate mice was not only was lifespan extended for the population as a whole, but the period of morbidity seemed to be compressed. And that's super exciting if we're thinking about interventions in humans, that not only is this a longevity intervention, but it's also an intervention that increases health span and also compresses morbidity, which is of such a massive social and economic um, uh, factor. <clears throat> 